Hey, what's up folks? How's it going? This is Wodge. Hope you guys are all doing well. And in this video, we're going to be talking about some of my favorite game capture cards, specifically for a general recording and even some live streaming purposes. Now, the first game capture card that we're going to look at is the most economical and simplest solution that you can find right now. It's the HGP Tech HD Game Capture Card. Now, uh, this retails for under $80, which is an absolute bargain. It will record 1080p, but the problem is at 30 FPS. Now you can do 60 FPS at 720p. Now if this is not a big problem for you, still a pretty good option. Keep in mind that this is a PC free capture card so it actually records locally via the USB host connection. The cool thing about this system is that it's kind of retro game friendly so it has HDMI connection as well as composite and component video. So if you're going to be hooking up to an older generation console that may not have HDMI compatibility, you're pretty much covered there. Now, now the last point I want to make is that it does require that you connect a 5 volt uh, power supply. Uh, sadly, it's not USB powered like some of the other higher end capture cards. So that's not as convenient as I would like, but still not a bad overall solution, especially if you're on a budget. Now going from the cheapest solution to the most expensive, we're going to take a look at the AverMedia Live Gamer Portable 2, which retails for just under $190, but it has a lot of things going for it. Firstly. It does have a built-in uh, capturing capabilities uh, using a micro SD slot, uh, really convenient there. And it has a multitude of different recording capabilities. You can record 1080p at full glorious 60 frames per second as well as 720p. And you do have a couple of different recording formats such as MPEG-4 using uh, H.264 codec plus AAC audio as well as motion JPEG. So you have excellent video capturing capabilities. Now, the uh, bundled software is a Rec Center 3. It's an excellent solution for editing uh, your videos or photos, as well as you can use it uh, to go live to Twitch or YouTube or whichever live streaming service you want to use and custom configure your live streams to whatever your desire is. So lots of different compatibility and obviously it's compatible with XSplit and o Open Broadcaster as well. The only downside is that it's using a, a USB 2.0 interface not USB 3.0 so you do have a little bit more latency which is not going to be ideal for uh, hardcore live streamers out there especially when there are solutions that's going to give you uh, very very minimal latencies and that's going to be really critical uh, to a lot of you guys out there so that's the only downside but other than that it's a fantastic all-in-one solution that has excellent recording capabilities now continuing forward the capture card device that I have been using for the past several months has been this over here the Elgato HD 60S. Now the 60S is basically an upgrade from the original HD 60. It now has USB 3.0 type C integration and it's powered through that USB connection. And since you have the high bandwidth USB 3.0 capabilities, you're going to receive 1080p at 60 frames per second with a very, very minimal latency, uh, probably the highest performing game capturing card solution that's out there in the market. So if you're competitive, gamer and want uh, probably a really fast solution uh, this is a great option and now the downside is that you have limited connectivity options basically an HDMI connection uh, for your 1080p at 60 frames per second capabilities uh, the Elgato software is really nice to use very user friendly and of course compatible with XSplit and OBS and all those things so uh, besides that you don't have any control dials on the device so it's very simple and easy to use uh, but uh, limited compared uh, to the other devices uh, we talked about. Now lastly we're going to talk about a capture card that pretty much has everything going for and that's the Razer Ripsaw. Now it's using USB 3.0 so that means you're going to have the ability to capture 1080p at 60 frames per second with very minimal latency just like the Elgato HD 60S so it's pretty much on par with the performance uh, there. The uh, video capturing capability is really nice but on top of that you also have auxiliary inputs for microphone phone or for line in. In addition to that, if you have a legacy console, you do have an option uh, to hook up uh, through a component connection, which is kind of nice and handy. And you do have the option to record in a compressed and uncompressed fashion for recording 1080p at 60 frames per second. So beyond those factors, the only real limitation is that uh, just like the Elgato, you are going to be tied to a PC. There is no internal recording capabilities like you have with the AverMedia and the APGP tech cards. So 
for some, that might be a concern. For others, that will have their PC connected with their consoles at all times. Uh, it won't be uh, even a concern whatsoever. But uh, definitely let me know what you guys think. If you have uh, specific capture cards that I didn't mention in this video, love to hear your thoughts. And which one would you get if you're in the market for uh, getting a game capture card? But besides that, guys, that's really it. If you have any specific questions, let me know. Check out the description for all the detailed links about everything we talked about. And we'll see you later. Take care.